Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am back with my second challenge and process video for my No Spend November 2020 challenge and giveaway series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the new challenge is, and find out how you can play along. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you think you're going to want to join in on the challenges, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you already haven't seen my video from Friday, I hope that you'll go check it out and find out what No Spend November is all about here on my channel. I want to get extra crafty this month, but use what I have. I will be stopping by hopefully 10 to 15 times throughout the month, posing a challenge for myself, and then hoping that you'll play along and be entered to win an awesome prize. Now again, the video from Friday has all of the details that you'll need, so if you're going to play along, you need to watch that all the way through at least once. I do have that video linked in the description box below. But until then, here's a little overview about what the challenge is going to look like. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. Also in the description box are the hashtags that you'll need to use for today's challenge on YouTube and on Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram to go ahead and tag me at call me crafty owl. And if you're going to participate on Facebook, make sure in the description of your photo that you add your YouTube username. Before I tell you what the latest challenge is, I do want to give you a heads up about the Facebook group. I have had a lot of people come and try to join me, but either they're not answering the questions that I pose or they're not agreeing to the group rules. If you have already put in a request to join the group and it wasn't approved or it was declined, please go back and try again and make sure you do all three of those things. I was trying to message everyone individually, but I woke up this morning to 50 new requests and unfortunately I can't go through and figure out which questions which person needs to answer or what they need to agree to. So please go ahead, just take an extra couple minutes and do that completely so I can get you approved. Because as soon as I see both of those questions are answered and you've agreed to the rules, I click that approve button so you can join in on the fun over there. Challenge number two is called Wild Thing. I want you to create a new project using an animal in some way. For my project today, I'm going to be creating a card and I'm using Avery L's Bring On The Joy stamp set. I thought these cute little penguins went great with the upcoming holiday season and just the upcoming weather here in the Midwest. I will be coloring my image today with Arteza colored pencils and instead of using a Gamsol stump and shaving it down, which I can't do very well. I have made my own Gamsol blending pen using Tim Holtz's empty alcohol ink blending pen. I also pre-cut my card base, some pattern paper for the card, and a little kind of metallic blue mat for my stamped image border. I will be stamping my image today in detail silver embossing powder before I color that in. If I add anything else as I go on in the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing the stamping and the heat embossing. 
the piece of off-white cardstock at the bottom of my misty will be the piece that ends up going on my card front so i arrange the little slab of ice toward the bottom center of that and then on the other scrap of off-white at the top i arrange my three penguins and the sentiment that i wanted to use for the card once I had all of my stamps arranged, I picked them up with the door of my Misty, and then you'll see that I kind of tap my fingers or my hands on those. And this is just because these stamps are brand new and have not been used, so this just helps with getting that ink to lay on there nicely on the first round. I do go ahead and stamp my ice slab first by itself and add the powder to it and you'll see that when I added the embossing powder I did have one little area that had some stray powder on it so I just brought in my dry brush and wiped that away and then I set this to the side to heat emboss it later. And now it's time to stamp and emboss my penguins and my sentiment. I did do this separately because I knew that I wanted to stamp it twice to make sure that I get lots of ink and just because there were more than one stamp to do at a time. So once I've stamped that twice, I pour my powder over the piece of cardstock. And on this one, I don't think I got my embossing buddy on there well enough. I did have some powder in areas that were not good. You'll see I kind of had to wipe it out from the little parts of the scarf. So reminder to always use your embossing buddy and use it well. Once I had the powder on both of those, I brought in my heat tool and I heat set that silver embossing. As always, I just love to see the change of this. When I do most any type of coloring that requires a liquid, I do bring in my cheap little cutting mat from the Dollar Tree. And for my pencils today, I just grabbed some that went with the colors in the pattern paper. That little scrap of off-white there is just for me later to wipe off the excess color from my Gamsol blender pen. Now, I probably should not have started with the ice slab to show you how this works because there's barely any coloring. What I did here was went around the kind of edges and where there might be shadows with that light gray pencil. And then I'm going to bring in my Gamsol blender pen and blend that out a little. Now keep in mind as you see this get pretty dark that that is the liquid from the Gamsol pen. And because the cardstock I'm using, it's not any really high quality cardstock, it does get a little bit wetter than if you would use a thicker, maybe better cardstock. But you'll see as I go to color my penguins that that dark area starts to lighten up as that Gamsol kind of evaporates out of there. Now I'm going to color a penguin for you so you can see the difference the Gamsol makes. Normally when you color with colored pencils, you always see those pencil strokes. But when you bring in that Gamsol blender, it evens that out and makes it a smooth sheen of color. You might be able to see it better when I bring in the black for the penguin. But I color in each of the areas with the green for his scarf and his skates, bring in that Gamsol blender pen, and then after I'm done with the green kind of blending that, I wipe off all that color on that scrap of cardstock. As I'm using the black colored pencil to color in the areas of the penguin, you're going to start to notice those pencil strokes a little more here. And that's what later you'll see has been blended away with the Gamsol blender pen. When I have my penguin colored in for the first time, once again I bring in that Gamsol blender pen, but this time after every little section, I bring that over to that scrap of cardstock to wipe it off. It just seems like with the darker colored pencil colors that you want to do this more frequently because the color seems to get built up on the tip of the pen. I brought in an orange colored pencil to quickly color in my penguin's beak and then I'm going to bring back in the green and the black colored pencil that I already used and I'm going to add some shading. What I usually do is just make a line where the shadows will be. Sometimes this is just where items overlap on the image or if there's an actual shading line made by the illustrator. Once I have the shading in there, I bring back in the Gamsol pen and I just blend that out just a little bit. I don't blend it all the way across the section anymore. While I finish up my penguin, you might have noticed that my little slab of ice has already lightened up quite a bit. I do go ahead and color in my other two penguins off camera. And here's a final look though at all of those images colored up. 
Next, I'll be using the coordinating dies with the set to cut out each of my little penguins. To hold the dies in place for die cutting, I did pull out my scotch blue removable tape, and later I will actually just place these pieces to the side of me here on my desk because I will be able to reuse those. When I remove that tape from the final die cut pieces, it doesn't harm the coloring or the cardstock itself. Now that all of the pieces are done, it's time to put the card together. The first thing I'm going to do is cover my card front with the piece of pattern paper. Then I'm going to mat my ice slab piece with that metallic blue cardstock. Before I get this piece put onto the card though, I need to get my penguins added on there. I play a little bit with the arrangement and then I decide that I want the green and the pink penguin to be adhered flat down to that piece of cardstock and then I'm going to bring in some mini dimensionals to put on the back of my blue scarfed penguin so he's just popped up right there in the center. I did purposely leave a little extra white area on the top right of the penguins because that is where I'm going to be placing my sentiment. I pulled in my Fiskars photo trimmer and I trimmed this down to a nice even border across the top and bottom. I decided that I wanted a little fishtail in the left side of my sentiment piece, so I brought in my Stampin' Up, I think it's called Pick a Banner Punch, and I put a fishtail on the left. Then I decided there was still a little bit too much white space on there, so I trimmed off the excess and redid the punch, and I liked the way that looked. I went ahead and adhered the focal point flat down onto my card front and then I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width to put some of that on the back of my sentiment strip. That way I would have the sentiment popped up as well as my blue penguin. Once I had my sentiment in place, I just brought in my scissors and I trimmed off the excess that was hanging over. Now I'm almost finished, but I want to add a little bling. You'll see here in front of me, I brought in my Elizabeth Craft Designs transparent and clear glitter dots, and I added five of the smallest of those to my card front. Now if you've been watching me recently, you know that I absolutely love these glitter dots and this is the one thing that I'm going to allow myself to buy this month because they have been out of stock for months. And you might also notice that my sheet looks a little bit different now. I had a subscriber give me a tip to take off the outside of the stickers because that helps when you pick them up to put them on your project. And let me tell you, this worked like a charm. Here's a look at the final finish card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by my second challenge this month. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. I can't wait to see what you create with your wild thing. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.